How's it going everybody, Dom here. In this video, we're gonna talk about what to do if you're a mid-career changer and your game plan to go from not knowing how to code to being competent enough to get a job as a junior developer. So, why I wanted to make this video is it was highly requested and there are some main challenges that mid-career changers will go through that you know your computer science graduate might not go through. There are things that are common between the two, but I just wanted to address some of the challenges that mid-career changers have and how to overcome that as opposed to somebody who's a new grad because I make a lot of content on the channel that has to do with like new grads, people coming out of college, doing internships, stuff like that. So I just wanted to broaden my horizons and really help those people who are uh, a little bit later in life uh, decide that programming is the right solution for you so I'm gonna present some of the problems and then we're gonna talk about some of the solutions to these problems now there are two main things that are unique to people that are trying to switch mid-career that other people don't have that is you know people coming out of college for example so one of them is going to be time, right? A lot of people who are new to the field, they're not going to be in a position where they can rent a room with 12 other guys for $500 a month in San Francisco, right? They have a family to feed. They have kids to take to school, take to soccer practice, take to hockey practice. And, you know, they have existing bills to pay. So they can't just simply quit their job and then study code for 12 hours a day. You know, as inflation has happened, as things get more expensive, we're seeing that it takes two incomes in order to just survive. So time is going to be a big aspect for these mid-career changers. Another consideration that we might have is a different background. So what do I mean by a different background? People might come from other careers. Maybe you have a career in sales. Maybe you have a career in accounting. And you're confused as to how to communicate this on a resume and how to really uh, put the pieces together so that you get attention from recruiters, from hiring managers, and from engineering managers. Because this is something that's not just unique to uh, people who are mid-career changers, but also to new grads. Is how do I stand out? How do I get the interview? Because once you get the interview, the solution is pretty simple, right? The solution is to grind lead code and, you know, work on your live coding if that's part of the interview process, right? And there's tons of videos out there on grinding lead code. And if you're failing those interviews, you know what to do. You know that it's just a matter of understanding algorithms and stuff like that. But some of the things that is often not addressed is how do I get the attention in the first place? We're going to talk about that in the video. So let's go over some of the solutions that I have. Let's talk about time. So there is really is no easy way to actually get over this time thing, except to make sacrifices that you don't want to do, right? Do you, do you think that if I wanted to learn to code, that I want to wake up at five o'clock in the morning and work on lead code or work, wake up at five o'clock in the morning and work on personal projects? I don't, right? But you have to assess whether you want this bad enough and whether it's worth all the time and effort. And let me tell you something about time and effort. No matter which, which career that you go into, anything that's good, that is worth a lot, you know that this field does pay quite a significant amount of money. You know, I'm seeing people who work at those big tech companies making upwards of $500,000. So it is very, very lucrative. You have to assess whether the amount of effort that it's going to take is going to be worth it for you. And it's totally okay if it's not worth it for you. You have to apply your efforts elsewhere. There are many different opportunities out there to uh, provide a better life for your family, provide a better life for yourself that doesn't help doesn't have to do with programming and problem solving. But if you're somebody who likes to build stuff and likes to solve problems and likes to solve complicated puzzles, this is definitely the field for you. But what I can tell you through building my own businesses in the past and going through this field now is it's going to take you significantly longer than it's going to take you somebody else, right? The, there's only two really variables in the equation. You can either apply more effort or you can apply 
over a longer time frame, right? So when it comes to the time frame, what you have to do is you have to pander your expectations, right? And what do I mean by pandering your expectations? If you know that you're only able to put four or five hours or three or two hours after work every single day, then it's going to take you significantly longer to get a job than somebody who's just getting out of college and lives on in their parents' basement and is able to lead code for eight hours a day, work on personal projects for four hours a day, therefore putting in 12 hours a day and they get a job in less than a year. What you need to do is you need to guard your expectations and think, okay, so I want to get into software engineering. I'm going to have to plan it such that it's going to take me two or three or maybe four years to get into the field. Now, you might be thinking this is a really long time and you're correct on that. But again, like I said in the beginning, you have to assess whether it's really worth it for you to study this for three or four years in order to provide a better a better life for your family and to work on something where you're building interesting things on a day to day basis. Right. So that's on the time front. Now, let's talk about one of the more important things, which is going to be marketing yourself. Now, you might be having a degree in, you know, marketing, sales, accounting, whatever it is. And you might be trying to get into software engineering. Right. So what are some things that you can do to stand out? So what you can do to stand out is at your work, try to take on more code oriented jobs. Right. What do I mean by this? Now, let's say that you are in a sales job, right? And you're finding that manually dialing numbers is kind of is kind of annoying and it's kind of a pain point for you. So by putting some sort of a Selenium Python project together for your work to dial numbers a lot quicker and sense if there's a voicemail and therefore increasing sales, that's something that you could do and that you could show employers. I remember when I got my first manufacturing engineering job, this is exactly what I did, right? In my manufacturing job, I was mostly responsible for, you know, just troubleshooting servers. So what I would do is I would, I would, you know, the server would come to me and there's like error codes all over. And typically what I would do is I, you know, call the OEM, I would get the replacement parts, I would install it. So there wasn't really too much of the technical problem solving, but I still, on my resume, I put that I was responsible for problem solving on the servers, which was correct. But on the side, when I wasn't busy, when we weren't getting any RMA systems, what I would do is I would build a React app in the Mern stack. I presented that to my CEO. She loved it. And then I ran away with that. And not only will this show the company that you're a valuable asset, therefore, keeping your job a lot longer, hopefully, knock on wood, that they don't lay you off. But it also shows that you have technical expertise and you put that on your resume, right? And what do you put on your resume? Well, what I would do is I would have some sort of an engineer kind of thing. So is this being dishonest? It could be. But at the end of the day, you have to think of who your audience is. Your audience is probably reading thousands of resumes a day, right? And then you're going to take the time in the interview when they actually hop on the phone with you and tell them, hey, look, I am a, you know, accountant at Accounting LLC, but I've actually built this, uh, this, you know, little tool here in the React app. And that's what they care about. They care is, do you have experience in this particular skill set? They're not picky about the titles because at the end of the day, so many companies have different titles for the same job that it's mostly irrelevant, right? So that's something that I would do to gain the attention on your resume. That's really the only thing you can do, right? Because I've tried it the honest way. I've tried putting that I was a manufacturing engineer when I was trying to get into software. Where did that end me get? Where did that end up getting me? Nowhere, right? So by being a little bit dishonest, you're going to do that. Now, what if you're unemployed, right? What do you put, right? So this also applies if you're, uh, in terms of the resume in general, is you're going to put a big focus on your projects. 
and you're also going to go and you're going to go door knocking on your local businesses trying to build whatever it is that they want to do. So what you want to do is you want to actually, let's say I'm a web developer, for example. What I want to do is I actually want to code out the website. I don't want to use the Mern stack. I, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You want to go to these businesses and you want to say, hey, look, I built you a website. You show it on your phone. You show it on your laptop. Well, you ask for the owner first, right? So you go to your local mom and pop pizza shop. You go to your local car dealer. And not your car dealer as in like Toyota, but your local used car lot. You go to your local dentist's office. You show the dentist, uh, business owner, the restaurant owner. You tell them that, hey, look, I built your website. It's a lot of like filler pictures right now, but you can have it. You know, if, you, if you're bold enough to charge them, you know, charge them a couple, couple hundred, maybe a thousand dollars for it. But that's not really the point. You're just... Your point is not to make a profit on this. Your goal should be to build a portfolio of real clients, right? Because what a lot of people are doing is a lot of people are building pet projects that have no impact on society. But what companies are really looking for is they're looking for something in real life that has made an impact. Resume writing in the past was, what have you done? Whereas resume writing right now is what impact can you make on my company and what value can you provide for this company? So when you go to this restaurant and when you build a website, it doesn't matter if you charge them and the website, you know, helps them see 20% gain in the amount of customers that they get. That is really good for your resume. You put on that resume that your website generated 20% more sales 20% of business on a slow day on a Thursday uh, and that's going to be really impressive. That's really what you want to do. So if you're unemployed, go knocking on doors. Even if you're not unemployed, even if you're working on projects, go knock on doors, knock on your restaurants. Don't even ask for money. Just say, hey, look, this is a website that I built for you. You can have it. All I ask is three testimony, a testimonial and three referrals. That's it. And then after you get those referrals and then you can start charging money if you really want to make kind of a little bit of gas money from it you know but those are my advice to the career changers out there you know i'm looking out for you guys i'm looking out for the college you guys i'm looking out for the career changes out there so if you like this video don't forget to hit like comment and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video